Okay, so for this problem on pay from page 499, we're asked um, to do some analysis of, let's see, let me get a highlighter going here. They're telling us that 58% of females lived alone back in 2000, and they want to know, is there significant evidence to conclude that the proportion has changed? So to do a significance test, we want to say that the null hypothesis is that the proportion hasn't changed, that it's still the same as it was back in 2000 at 58% or 0 0.8. And then since we don't know a direction there, they're telling us whether it's greater than or less than, we're going to use a two-tailed test. So it's not equal to 0 0.58. All right, this just changed. So now there's a couple of things to do with this. Um, we know that the center of this distribution if the 58 is still the same, it hasn't changed, is 58%, or so 0.58. And then what we need to decide is if the sample result is far enough away from the 0.58 in order to say there's something significantly different, statistically significant. How do I want to word that? Statistically different from the old average. So what we can do is we're gonna if we convert this to z-scores, we know that the average is, is is zero, a z score is zero. And then if we wanted to approach this to the classical approach, which I'll be honest with you, I tend not to do. I'll tend to use p values, but it, it, this is an option. Um, what we need to do is figure out that z-score that cut is that cuts forms a rejection region. In other words, what is the z-score going to be far enough away? in order to say that something more than just chance is going on. So we need to decide on that z-score. Um, so they're telling me to use a level of significance of a 0.1 level of significance, and it's two-tailed. So what I'm going to do is I can go to that table 5 in the textbook, and if you scroll down to the bottom of it, Dr. Sullivan's give us a little little cheat subsection of it, we're going to look at the level, the 0.1 level of significance, and we want it two-tailed. So we're going to look at 1.645. Uh, can I can I grab this? So uh, what we're doing is we're looking at that 1% level of significance that I was just saying or 10% level of significance at 0.1, and we want a two-tailed test. So this is the critical value of Z. In other words, that's the borderline, that's the fence that we get to get past. So if we go back to my uh, to that drawing I made, if that Z score is as low as or lower than negative 1.645, or higher than positive 1.645, then we can reject HO. That's a four. Okay, now there's a professor that I, I know at White Mountain Community College, and when he teaches this method, he thinks of, he tells the students to think of anything in this range is the happy place. And that means that the null hypothesis is true and that the average is, is can't, you can't, we can't say that it's any different than the 58%. And as soon as you get out here in these tail areas, Okay, that's the rejection region, the unhappy place, the null hypothesis isn't true anymore, okay? So now we've got to get a z-score. So if we're going to do this by hand, what we can do is we can say, well, I know that there were sample proportion or p-hat is 285 females out of 500 that said they live by themselves still. So um, that is, if I can do this with my calculator, 0.57. Doesn't seem that different. So now we'll do a z-score. So the p-hat is 0.57. Compare that to the what we think is a population average of 0.58. And then we're going to divide that by the standard deviation for this distribution. And you always use your population 
numbers to because that's what you're saying is is the basis. That's the sampling distribution, right? Let's see, one minus 0.58 is 0.42. If I'm doing my arithmetic right, and we're going to divide that by what 500. So if we do all that math. We get that for a z-score. All right, now because that z-score isn't out in the rejection region, it's in this happy place to quote Lincoln. Um, Lincoln Robertson is the guy's name. Uh, um, it's in it's in the happy place, so we can't reject HO. So there isn't enough evidence to conclude that the proportion has changed. It looks like there's there's still no more than uh, you know. There's not. I, Going to be careful because this is too this is two tailed. That there's still around 58% of the females in that age that li live alone. Okay, so that's the classical approach. Um, we could also do this with p values, and software does this very nicely for us. Um, what I did earlier is I went to. Uh, oops, what did I just do? Sorry. I'll stop. I just opened up a stat crunch window is what what I what I did to use stat crunch to do this since you have it and it's free uh, for you. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do we're going to do a proportion. I click on stats, proportions, one sample, and we don't want to use this data that's in this window. We want to enter our own from the problem. So there's 500 successes. Uh, I'm sorry, 285 successes out of 500 observations. This is asking you for the p hat. Okay, I think I got those entered in right. And then our null hypothesis is that it's equal, the proportion hasn't changed, it's equal to 58% still, so I wrote 0.58. Our HA is that it's not equal to, so we left that. And then we'll just let it calculate it and see, it gives us our z score. It gives us the p-value, which is a huge p-value, a lot larger than 10% or 0.1. So we can't reject HO, same conclusion. Okay, so I hope that helps clear that up for you.